this fucking thing. I can work on this like every night for like a couple of weeks, man. And, and like I'm still not done yet. And it's the whole night I'm working on it. I like because I can put in like all this time. And he could see it in all the line work too. When you get up close, like every single stroke, every single line, like nothing's hidden. Every little pencil mark. You can't like ink is a very forgiving medium if you do it over pencil, you know. But you can also readapt shit to it. But it's also at the same time, especially with these pens, you see every little process that went into the work. I started doing the pen and ink work when I was 18. Um, first one I ever did, it all had like a punk orientation to it, but I was using mainly like uh, female figures because, uh, <clears throat> well, you know, you're into that young, you're just like, I'm just going to do like hot oh, chicks with crazy tattoos. Then I started really getting into it get into punk rock music and punk rock culture. I started making a lot of friends in Manhattan, uh, going to a lot of shows in Manhattan. It was like really the first time in my life too that I had like this acceptance amongst like, like a peer group too. I went into it like slowly at first and then by the time, I mean, but you know, within like a year or so I was sort of like fully fledged, you know, like grew my hair out. So I had like this mohawk that were like bi hawks. Um, started kind of putting my own clothes together too to kind of like fit that culture and that was my life I was doing a minimal amount of drawing and as I was gearing out of that culture you know but still into the the music and still going to shows but kind of like not then I started kind of like going directly for the art so the art actually happened right after that like flipped all of a sudden and it's that at that point that I just literally just started focusing on my art and that's sort of when I became I think when I became an artist Anthony Ocaña turned me on to this artist Ramon Oviedo and it was that guy in particular I remember just like sitting around looking at this dude's art these like abstract paintings that's super fucking like there was like figurative elements there was just elements of the Dominican history like the military ruling in the American influence it's personal influence like massacres you know like abstract forms that I don't even can't even explain and just like multi-layer after layer after layer um, and I was like just kind of getting a little getting a little ripped one night looking at it and I was like that's when it hit me I was like holy fucking shit and I was like that's what triggered me on to like fine art was that night so what happened was like I come to realize like I got done with school out here and like I also realized that I've never really gotten into like what's going down today with art so what immediately attracted uh, me was wheat pasting and street art not necessarily I mean I've always like appreciated graffiti in the traditional sense you know but it was actually it was the street art that really got me for some reason why it's because a lot of it's like black and white and kind of like similar appropriated to what I was doing and like this whole new fucking world opened up and I was like where the fuck was I when all this was going down just suddenly I started to focus on like doing this like style that was basically based off like the US military or a modern soldier you know even looking at like looking at like blackboard security um, and then like historical stuff you know like Nazi stuff World War II stuff uh, Vietnam War stuff you know just stuff based on like this side of humanity or what's going down in the world today started appropriating that form of aggression or whatever it may be and it wasn't actually about the politics it was more about the aggression into my work but also taking elements of mainly San Francisco or what Americans are and kind of missing, mixing them in with say like the Cuban Revolution or uh, elements of like World War II definitely elements of like fascism um, but also the whole uniformity literally on a superficial level of like a punk rocker and even more so you know I hesitate to use the word but a fucking hipster or like the whole bike messenger thing so where you have like obviously a war or post-war going on on American soil in an American city but also how that's not only uh, affecting people um, and their lifestyle but also like their fashion their mentality uh, their weaponry uh, and their political movements militarizing the extreme and but also not to the extent of like bleeping out like because you can't really do that bleeping out subculture in America but integrating subculture into this militaristic somewhat neo-fascist mentality you know or maybe not even neo-fascist the complete fucking opposite but I do leave that up to the viewer